Arnson, Michael Halton, Terry Porter, TP in the house. So good to see you again. It's like we got the band back together. Yeah, that's right. It was, <laughs> they were the exact same seats <laughs> four or five years ago when we were doing the pregame show. Well, all the great bands are coming back together. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> hey, get everyone up to speed on what you're doing. I mean, uh, you and Bill Shonley now live in Blazer Lore. You're etched in Blazer Lore because you each have a beer named after you. <laughs> The Terry Porter Porter, right? <laughs> I should have brought some from you the studio. Have. I, I wasn't you. thinking. I wasn't thinking. I get you guys some, but that's a fun project I've been involved with, the Gilgamesh down in Salem, uh -huh. and they really approached me with it. It wasn't my idea. It was their ideal. They wanted to bring. A, obviously, this time of year is a time where a lot of people drink porter, which is a more darker beer mm -hmm. for the fall and the winter, and they brought it to my attention and said, "Would I be interested?" And I said, "Hey, let's." Let's see if we can get a charity involved with it. And uh, me sitting on the board of Dornbacker said, hey, let's let's approach Dornbacker and see if they would be open to the ideal of, um, you know, having the proceeds from an alcohol beverage kind of go towards the Children's Hospital. And they were very open to the ideal. And so the three of us sat down and talked about it. And then once we got the clearance, then we obviously went back down to their brewery and we start literally brewing yeah. and testing beer. I, I saw the story. It was very, it was very... <laughs> very it was educational. Like, very nice experience. Yeah, huh? very, very <laughs> educational. Felt really good. Yeah, I, I'm used to going on wine tours. Yeah. But the, the beer tour was fine too. <laughs> I saw the story on Fox 12, and your soundbite was classic. Uh, because I think I came in the next day and asked if you saw it, and it was on Oregon Sports Final with Nick Krupke, and you said, "Yeah, what does it taste like?" And you said, "Tall, dark, and smooth." <laughs> Oh God! With a little, with a little sparkle in his eye when he said it. Oh, that's good stuff. Um, what is your, your your immediate thought when watching this Trailblazer team this year? I mean, are you you've got to be as impressed as everyone else? Nobody saw this coming. Yeah, I don't think anybody saw it coming. I think when you look at everybody, um, when they start naming and putting this roster together, everybody just thought, okay, let's get these guys playing hard. Let's get them to the point now where, you know, by the end of the year, they have a good feel for each other and they may be able to make some, some, some strides, but no one had thought they would be in a playoff situation, let alone, you know, in a sixth, got a chance for a sixth seed, I think. You know, everybody think, okay, they, if they hit it right, and they, they hit their stride early, maybe for the eight seed. But, you know, give, like uh, we said earlier, give Terry Stott and his coaching staff, give Damian and CJ his maturity a ton of credit for the way they've been able to, uh, you know, play on the court. But more importantly, Michael knows this. These guys, I give them credit because they play hard and they compete oh. every night. And when you do that in this league, mm -hmm. You can win seven, nine games because the teams you're going to play, they're going to do this. They're going to tap out on you. <laughs> and you can get some wins that way. You know what I, I think is interesting because this team is good offensively, and that was recognizable early. I mean, Dame and CJ can score the ball. And and, and when I looked at the offense and, and the offensive successor, I said the defining moment for this team is going to be when the scouting catches up to them, mm -hmm. what happens from there. Mm -hmm. And that's when this team became a good defensive team. And that's what was most yeah. impressive to me. They didn't try to figure out a new way to score. They figured out a, a, a more cohesive way to defend that got them in the open court. Because this team still is not being reduced to having to play against set defenses very much. So true. I mean, you, you talk about this league, every team talks about getting the easy baskets, live turnovers that leads to easy layups. You don't want to face a team for 48 minutes set defense. You're going to struggle. Teams emphasize too much, and you can see here the many turnovers and the way these guys share the basketball. You can't teach that. Guys have a true feeling and appreciation for each other's skill set when they look to make everybody better on the court. Terry, we're old, so every now and then we talk about the game from <laughs> – the perspective of how it was yeah, exactly, and how it is. Exactly. So we need to introduce a, a, an element of, of that to this conversation because it's amazing to me that the three-point shot early in the possession or on the break is standard operating procedure. And oh. I'm, I'm trying to look wow. back to, you know, in our day, the three was the result of inside out last no option. I want doubt. you to kind of speak to the changing uh, of tempo that way. Well, you talk about the revelation of this game and how it's come over. Like you said, we – we came in the league, and they told you the ball had to go in the post before you even think about shooting a three. Once it got in, then it got kicked out, you can shoot a three. We talk about the transition three. Well, when we all transition year coaches, run to the basket, get to the basket. Guys, now get to the three-point line, get to the three-point line. They don't even touch the paint on the transition situation. They run to the three-point line. And so that itself, from a mindset standpoint, 
it is so different when you think about the two generations or the two eras of basketball, the way it was played in the 80s, pounded inside, throw the ball in the post, whoever matchups you have, see if you can draw fouls. No, nah, forget to draw fouls. Give me a three-ball attempt and let me get that thing going up in the air. <laughs> and I want to point this out. Mark Cuban said recently after Friday's game that the NBA should move the three-point back a little bit. He's thinking seven to ten inches back even further because that will really test your skill then. Uh, uh, thoughts on that? I mean, I, I think he may have a valid point, and Mark Cuban's a well, smart guy. but Or do this. Go really old school and just eliminate it. You don't have any three-point line. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to be fine. So since I'm sitting in between, y'all, let me tell you what I just heard. Mark Cuban said you got to shoot it from out of bounds in the corner. <laughs> We're not talking about We're talking seven inches. You can't move it anymore he, in the corner. In the corner, it's well, 23. He says the volume, okay. uh, the volume wouldn't change. People are still going to probably put up that many yeah. shots. But um, it will test your skill a little bit more if you – and it, what else is it going to do? It's going to open up the court more. It's going to uh, offer more mid-range. I mean, I think it's a valid point. I, I'd be up for it because yeah. right now, guys like Steph Curry are making it look absolutely silly. Uh, he, he, well, but yeah, I, I like the fact. I like the line where it is. I like the fact that we have an era of basketball where we have a couple of players that are very proficient from behind the arc. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Steph Curry, James Harden, Damian Lillard, CJ McCullough. Yeah. You've got half a dozen players in this league where the three-point shots are layup. Mm -hmm. I don't think you change the game because of it. Huh. If anything, in, in today's game, and this is what the old-timers, the Oscar Robinson and them are starting to comment <laughs> on, is the lack of physicality on the mm, perimeter. Right. Yeah. That's what's really changing the yeah. game because back in the day, it was a power game. You threw it into the post, and you looked at how you were played, and you rotated the defense inside out. Now you rotate the defense by spacing mm. the floor initially. Yeah. Uh, and, and so there's there's some nuances to the game. But at the end of the day, the NBA wanted scoring, and they got scoring. Yeah, I mean, they, they wanted the viewers sitting at home <laughs> to see free-flowing action for the offensive player. You get that. Free, for, uh, the offensive players have free lanes, yeah. free opportunities, and once he puts it on the ball, he basically can't get touched. Michael know I know. Boy, I played against some guys back in the day. They put their hand on your hip. Hey. You were hey. going the way they wanted hey. you to go. Hey, <laughs> Derek Harper owned oh. me. <laughs> I him, and El, him, and, him and Elvin Robinson, boy. Oh, oh, man. They put that hand in time, you'll dribble, <laughs> and as soon as you let that thing go, they push you in the waist, and you look down, and they got the ball. But the game has changed. And, yeah. and it's by design, though, Adam, that that that, that the offense is, is unimpeded yep. uh, and that the shooting is now getting better as a result. We've talked about this. You and I have talked about this. What is the one thing that the Trailblazers need or they're lacking right now? And it's a low post back to the basket type of score. Uh, Do, are they really lacking it, though? That's uh, the question. Uh, maybe when you look at the game, maybe you just watch them. And, yeah, they don't have a guy at the power forward position who can get his own shot, be that effective with Noah Vonley down there or Mason Plumley. He's, he's an extra possession kind of guy anyway, a hustle guy. Do they actually need that type of player? When you, when you look at the game today and how it's progressing – it's not mandatory that you have a guy that can play back to the basket. You need a guy, you know, who can play some, you know, be able to have an sure. advantage to do it, but not back in Iowa where you have to throw it down there 20 times. Yeah. You know, maybe if you feel like someone's in foul trouble, you want to try to post up. But today's game is all about spacing and pick and roll and being able to operate with that big who's involved with the pick and roll. And Golden State makes it very no doubt. clear that when he, sh we call it short rolls, so that guy sets that screen, he short rolls to the free throw line, that pocket pass is there, and now you have three on two offensive players. You have Green in the middle, two offensive shooters in the corner. Mm -hmm. What are those two defensive guys going to do? How are they going to commit? What kind of defensive scheme are they going to have to try to guard those three offensive players? And if they come to him, he's great at making a pass to those shooters. And the shooters knock down the shots at a high clip. You know what's exciting is we're talking about kind of the same thing, but it, it plays out differently. You rewind the tape in basketball, and you threw the ball into the post, and the guard either dug or doubled. So two guys played one, and then you played three on two off the ball, or four on three, or however you want to do the math. I'm not great at math. But now what's happening is the double team is happening at the point of pick and roll basketball. Yep. It's where you're showing and you're putting that guard in a crowd. And now you got to be able to hit the big man short rolling, as TP said. Or, and this is what I like to see, is these guards have gotten so confident slash overconfident in their handle that they start playing around with the ball in traffic. When you look at the John Walls and the Kyrie Irvins and, and, and you look at what happens when they lose vision because of their overconfident creativity, that's what's fascinating in today's game. 
It certainly changed. It has certainly changed, and uh, we embrace change. We've embraced change because <laughs> of what the trailblazers are doing. Not all change is growth. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right.